212. It is Thursday, January the 10th, 2019, with Jeff Plaskett of thefremontoutpost.com. I'm Richard Dwyer, bettingangle.us, uh-huh. gamblersadvice.com, uh-huh. and we're here to talk football. Jeff, how did you want to kick this off? Well, <laughs> that's how I want to kick it off. Okay. I want, to re- I want to recall the days of our youth when ABC was king. Live little sports, Monday night football, occasional Super Bowls. Even the juice was involved at Stanford Stadium when the 49ers beat the Dolphins. But now, now it's ESPN and NBC and CBS and Fox. I missed I missed the early days of uh, Monday Night Football. That that was appointment television. Now Monday Night may be the third best game of the week if they're lucky. So it's not quite the same. But right, right. I mm-hmm. do want to acknowledge that the double doink made you. The winner of last weekend. Congratulations on a partially blocked kick that hit the upright and the crossbar. That was quite a finish to that. <laughs> that allowed Philadelphia to advance to their soon to be annihilation, according to Vegas. I guess they're eight point underdogs this weekend. Oh, oh all right. are you talking about Cody Parker? Uh, Parky, my MVP? Um. <laughs> uh, you can have him. I don't even know who he is. Who's Cody Park? Oh, you mean the kicker? Right, right. Chicago's actually, kicker who uh, blew it. Apparently, mm-hmm. after the fact, someone spotted a fingernail on the ball, and the defensive player took full credit. It, it missed by an eyelash. I mean, it, it's you know, it's just the way it goes. The guy made all the kicks and the kick, of course. I really despise the last second timeout. I know it's legal. I think it's ridiculous. It's used all the time. It's just it's so obvious. That's why I was so confident because he made that kick so easily the first time. I thought this is a no brainer. This is going to be over with. But right. you know, I'll be- say this. The um the beer should have won that game. There's no question about it. Right. I thought that last drive, I thought uh Tyree Cohen, who was ignored all game, getting right. the nice return, and then Robinson, who really should have been one of the heroes of the game, catching that ball, getting it in field goal range. Uh, right. Mitch Trubisky, I'll give him credit, threw for he a lot of yards. Better than, better than I expected. He played well, especially that last drive. They had it set up to win. He went right down the field. It was impressive. Right. I thought he looked like a million bucks. And so, you know, the kick hurt him. I'll say this, though, in fairness to Philly, right? Philly would have covered regardless. Right, kick makes it. Philly loses. You're a well, gambler. You still we, cover. Mm-hmm. We both agreed that Philly was going to cover. We just had the disagreement was who was going to be the ultimate victor in the game. Right, right. Wait till you hear some of my picks for this week. I I'll say this too. I I must have been the only person in America who didn't get two and a half points on the uh, Seattle Seahawks. Well, I only got that, two points. It was interesting. It, the line changed, I think, the last couple hours because it was two points that morning of the game. Either right. way, you either, got a, you either got a split or you won. So it was right on the borderline. That was right. quite a finish, too, that game. Uh, Russell Wilson seemed like whenever he get the ball, but I seem to remember someone saying if, Zeke got over 120 yards, and the X Factor, their receiver, had a good game. That was the way Dallas could control the ball and win. I don't know. I heard that somewhere. And that's <laughs> exactly too. what happened. And you have to say, right. Dak, Dak played well. I mean, they couldn't tackle him at the end. He, he ran it right up the middle against, against uh, the vaunted but, but kind of not fully formed Seattle Seahawks defense. Dak did right. his job, but Zeke was, he schooled whoever that, that guy from Central Florida, whoever, that replacement for Richard Sherman. Two plays, obvious pass interference, and then the stiff arm, that it looked like he, he paralyzed the cornerback on that 20-yard run. And Zeke, Zeke was the best player in that game, I think. That was a great performance by him. 
Right. I'll say this about that Seattle game. Um, didn't deserve the cover in that game. Don't get me wrong. Um, right. or, or, or the push. I only got a push. They only uh, got it the, because their kicker was hurt. They wouldn't have gone for two points. Right, Sebastian Janikowski. Right, I, that's I love exactly that Janikowski. Right. We can trust you for a long field goal, and that may be the last thing he ever does. His hand, I, I guess he's too old to try to kick field goals anymore because he fell to the ground like he'd been shot in the back of the leg when he was trying that end of the first half field goal. Right, right. I'll say this, though. Um, you know, Cody Parkey, the beer kicker, signed yeah. a big contract before yeah. having this awful year. Right. Sebastian Janikowski for kickers has yeah. made a lot of money in his career and he's an older kicker. So if he's having hamstring problems and stuff like that at the most inopportune time of the year, playoff games right. and stuff like that, and I wouldn't be surprised. Cold. The, the mm-hmm. weather sure wasn't a factor in his pulling the hamstring. It was a nice evening in Dallas. Right, right, right. You know, I'll say, uh, too, uh, with the Cowboys. In fact, why don't we lead with the Cowboy game? Oh, you mean the Ram game? <laughs> the Rams well, are favored I'll say this. by a full touchdown. Full touchdown. Okay, well, well, tell me how you see that game. I don't know. You no, you can go first. I was just pointing okay. out there's two teams. It's not just the Cowboy game. That's all I wanted to say. Right. Well, I'll say this. Um, I do expect the Rams to win, but oh, oh. but but uh, well, well, hell, they they are favored by seven. I just don't like the spread. So my yeah, seven points is a lot. It, and seven, Dallas, is pl- Dallas is playing their best. The Rams have obviously not been playing their best. So I was surprised by that line. Did that line change? I don't think it started off at seven this week. You know, I think it was hovering around seven. Yeah, uh, I'm it, surprised. It's gone, it, it's, it's gone higher. It didn't start at seven because I thought all the games were. I think the Saints line went up too. But anyway, that's beside the point. Right now, the Saints game, my pick there might be a little bit interesting, too. But uh, with with regard to this Dallas game, right. you know, Dallas's defense only gave up 11 first downs. Right. Against no, they Seattle. were impressive. Yeah, they were very impressive. Also, Dallas is an interesting team who, during the season, beat both the Saints and Philly. In other words, Dallas Correct. has handled business against elite teams right. now. The reason I have the Rams winning is because the Ram offense is much better, right? And I'll say, too, that a quick, big Rams lead could take Dallas out of the game because they're relying on Ezekiel Elliott. And let's face it, you talked about the old days. You, you, you know, mentioned O.J. Simpson, right? Much better, much better back than Zeke. I'll say this, you know, Zeke simply, to me, is not a home run hitter. In other words, he's not Juice, he's not Eric Dickerson, he's not Barry Sanders, he's not that back who could break it for 40, 50 yards. Now, I know Cowboy fans disagree. What about, doesn't mm -hmm, he kind of remind you of another Cowboy running back, Emmitt Smith, who wasn't a breakaway runner but consistently came through? I don't think Emmitt Smith was a bad back. I seem to remember him holding the Lombardi trophy a couple times in the 90s. Right, but I'll say this. You know, I'm someone who prefers Tony Dorsett to Emmitt Smith. Oh, Tony Dorsett was awesome. Now you're talking 70s. Right, because Tony, Monday Night Football, you remember he breaks off a 99-yard run. Um, Oh, yeah. Right, well, Emmitt Smith, to me, you could take the Cowboys out of the game. But right. at least Emmett out of the game. You still had another Hall of Famer, Troy Aikman, throwing to yet another Hall of Famer, Michael Irvin, yeah. right? But I could take Emmett out of the game if right. I jumped out to a big lead on them, right? right? In fact, your Niners did just that one playoff years ago. You remember that? The turnover oh, yeah. game, Cowboys kept giving you the ball. <laughs> Cowboys eventually gave the game away. Well, all I'm saying is if the Rams jump out, then right. the Cowboys are going to have to rely on Dak Prescott, who isn't Troy Aikman. Right. And I know we're all excited about Amari Cooper. He hasn't even been there a full season. Right? So, to me, yeah, well, McVay is an offensive guy. I'm expecting the Rams, who have had a chance to rest. Oh, they're going to gonna have, they're gonna have some new plays. They're going to be – they're gonna. I would think their first couple drives will be – will probably set Dallas off balance at the beginning. But it's usually the adjustments in a close game that make the difference. So it really depends if they get off to a lead or not. 
Because right. And so Jason right. Garrett, I'm I'm supposed to believe in his ability to make adjustments? No, you're not supposed to believe in him at all. There's no no proof of concept with Jason Garrett. He's a right. good, he's a good mm -hmm. helmet slapper. He really gave Dak a good helmet slapping after and congratulations for the the, the clinching touchdown. Yeah, I'll say this too. You know, Zeke over 100 rushing yards. Over 120. Yet, over 120, and yet that Cowboy <laughs> total offensive number was right. under 400. In other words, Dak really was pedestrian. Now, granted, he's playing an excellent defense in Seattle, right. but he was playing them at home, right? Right. So, right. So I, I don't believe Dak is a threat to put up great offensive numbers. I believe that's what you need if you're playing a team like the Rams who just threw down 48 points against San Francisco. Game before oh, that, they oh, threw oh, down 31 points against Arizona. The 4-12 mm -hmm. 49ers, you mean? <laughs> you know, 4-12 and 12 49ers, but a Ram team that wasn't completely healthy, right. right? Guys like Todd Gurley have been missing in action. In other words, I know I feel the Rams are badly hurt by the Gurley injury and by Cooper Cup being out. But yet, even this depleted Ram team, you know, last two games have put up a total of more than 70 points. Right. So, I, you know, I do feel the Cowboys will be able to hold their own. I do feel the defense will be able to make some plays. I think the Cowboys, I'll just say this, I don't like the seven-point line, but I do right. feel the Rams win. My advice to gamblers, and I know it's a little bit controversial here, but my advice is if you're going to bet on the Rams, bet on Ram futures. In other wow. words, you don't want to take the Rams on the money line and give away most of your profits. Right. At this stage of the game, you bet on Ram futures. If the Rams win, you have an easily hedgeable position because the Rams will then be in the uh, conference finals. And right. You only right, and the futures I'm talking about uh, are to win the Super Bowl, not just the conference. I see. Right. Well, okay. how do you see it? Go ahead. You you expound a bit. I I, I looked at uh, Gurley's usage. He actually has been only getting like 18 touches a game, and I know he's been banged up. I think this week off is going to have him probably in the best shape he's been since the first half of the season. I, I think he'll be able to play. I think Jared Goff also, with this week off, has probably gone back to basics. I would imagine he and Sean McVay have tried to get his footwork addressed. I know, mm -hmm. I know the Cooper Cup injury is significant, but they, they have a lot of playmakers and they really have a lot in their mind about losing less. I, they've been prepping for this game. It's, it's actually ideal, not only the week off, but they had a chance to work on themselves the first week. So they didn't have to try to plan a scheme for an opponent. So they worked on their fundamentals, and now they're preparing for the Dallas Cowboys. I expect their defense to play a lot better, too. The problem I have with the line is the way Dallas is based even if they fall behind by 10 or 14 points, I don't believe they would abandon the run game just because Zeke is far too important. I think, I think the Rams might, if they get off to an early lead, the Cowboys will, will probably want to use up clock and not give them too many chances. I figure that this game will still be in question in the fourth quarter. So I would, I would probably, if I had to, I would take Dallas in the points because I think, I think this could be easily a three- or four-point win. I just think the Rams are going to win. I, it's hard to call a blowout because Dallas' defense is so good. I, I wouldn't expect this game to be a normal Ram 35, 40-point game. I would think it would be more low 30s, high 20s just because Dallas' defense is that good. And no one knows exactly what shape Todd Gurley is going to be in. I expect the Rams to play well, but I would think Dallas. The, the other real key thing is the lack of home field advantage. They're expecting over half the fans to be Cowboy fans. So the Cowboys may not be at home, but I think they're going to be very comfortable. I don't think the L.A. Coliseum is much of a home field advantage. As we've seen when Stanford or Alma Mater goes down to play USC, they actually play... There is no home field advantage, and that's when it's 90% 
USC fans. I just I think the Coliseum itself is not made where it gets extremely loud on the field. It gets loud in the stands. So I see this being a pretty close game. I think the Rams get out early. I think the Cowboys try to remain patient. I don't think they're going to take too many unnecessary chances. I I know the Rams have a good d- defensive line in terms of Aaron Donald and uh, Donovan Sue. I'm not sold on their run defense. I think Zeke can run on these guys. So that's why I think Dallas will probably win the time of possession battle. And that's why I'm expecting maybe a lower scoring game than some of Ram fans. So I, I, I believe the Rams are going to win. But I if forced to, the seven point line is pretty close. That could be the final score. But if I had to, I would take Dallas in the point. This one. Okay. You don't think that the Rams are going to clog the box up, force um, Dak Prescott to beat them passing, and then cover Amari Cooper and uh, force Dak into turnovers? You don't see that scenario I, I, coming you know, out? I think, I think Dak has kind of heard all the, well, he's a game manager. He's not one of the top players. I think he's learned. That he can, he's not going to force the throw, and I, I think Amari Cooper has been getting better, and he showed again last week, particularly in the first half, that he's, he is a number one receiver. So oh I no, think, he's, but I, but I think he's the, one is the threat of the run. So what, whatever the Rams do to try to bottle up Zeke, that's gonna, that's gonna leave somebody open. If you put eight men in the box, then even Dak Prescott can find an open receiver. It really comes down to is he going to force the ball? And I don't think he's going to try to force the ball. I think he'll throw it away. I think he's well aware that he has a good defense. I, I don't think he would try a really tough pass unless the Rams fell. I mean, the Cowboys fell behind by 14 or 17 points. Then they may be forced to go. But, and, you know, 10 points or less, I think they're going to stick with Zeke as their main weapon until okay. the last few minutes of the game. I'll say this, though. You know, Donald is so quick in getting oh, yeah. to the quarterback. If, right. the, if the Rams can get a push up the middle, um, I think that could have some problems. You but know, then, I but think, then, but mm-hmm. then they'll, they'll go to screen passes. They'll go for quick passes. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they've run into this situation throughout the year. Okay. It, it, that, that's where the adjustments come in. I think the Rams come in, have a really impressive first quarter, and then it settles back into a more normal mode. So the key for Dallas is not to fall behind by 14 or 17 points midway through the second quarter. Then they're up against it. Then you've got the Rams defense will have momentum. They'll be going after Dak. I just don't see that happening because I think Zeke, Zeke is, I think he's the best um, running back in the league by a considerable margin this year. He's been very impressive. Oh, wow. You you know, I feel that a healthy girly. But he's not healthy. He's, oh, okay. Okay. I can't, I can't argue with that. Yeah. Right? I can't argue with uh, that. But, you know, Zeke, I, I think, Zeke certainly is off to a great better, start this week. Mm-hmm. Gurley is a much better receiver. But Zeke is a really good running back. He's, he can go inside and outside, which is going to be the key. It's going to give the Cowboys options. He's, he's quite a player, too. He's had a good career so far. Right, I'll say he, he is a throwback because he's a guy right. who you could feed the ball to, as Cowboy fans say, feed Zeke. <laughs> right? yeah. You can literally treat him like you treated O.J. Simpson back in the day. A lot of carries, right? He's the centerpiece of the offense. Um, you know, the other team, you know, has to figure out how to stop him or they lose and stuff like that. He is a workhorse, no question about that. Yep. Oh, all right, so... So what, we're both what, what, taking the Rams to win. We both have concerns about the line. Right. Are you thinking you that the top is cover? Do you know what the over-under is on this game? Because I, I would think, depending on how high, that might be an under bet, because I think this will end up being a defensive game in the end. I would assume it's around 54 points, something like that. I don't, I don't know. Right, you know, um, I would think that there'd be about fifty to fifty-four points scored. So it depends on what the over/under line. I think it's going to be like something like twenty-eight, twenty-four Rams, something of that order. I wouldn't be surprised to see a score like that. That would okay. be. I could, I could see a sport like that. I'm not going to play with the over/under. For me okay. personally, 
I like futures simply because of the leverage I get, right? And over under, you're going to get paid off at a minus 110 or even money. Right. With futures, you're getting better than three to one, you know? Okay. And um, yeah, my goal on a futures play is just to lock in the odds right. so I could later hedge it. So food for thought. Okay. Okay. All right, so the consensus here seems to be Rams win. You're expecting a lower scoring game. I can see that too, right? right. Lower scoring game. Um, we both are staying away from the point spread. Is I would only do it under gunpoint. I, I think seven points. <laughs> It's a lot of points, but it's also it could be the final spread. It's not a good bet in my. I just don't see. I see anywhere from four to eight, four to ten point Ram victory. So I that I don't want to touch the seven point line. I just it just depends. It could change at the last minute if the if Dak is going for a desperation throw and then it's returned for a touchdown. That could be the deciding factor in that bet, and I wouldn't want to have my money on that. Yeah, I'll say the Cowboys have a lot of young guys. They're going to be ready. Um, I have a problem laying seven against a defense this good. Right. You know, right. Just food for thought. Now, is that What's game like, Saturday? Mm -hmm. What game? Well, I don't even know what day the Cowboy Ram game is. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you and I are I'm really prepared. Uh, <laughs> Actually, yeah, I'm you know, I'm, I'm not even sure on the day. I it did look up, it's well I did look up the weather. I uh, did look up the wind. I know it's um, not supposed to be raining or snowing in Southern California. Yeah, right? it generally doesn't this time of year or any time of year. Right, and I didn't see a high miles per hour. And even if there were yeah. a lot of wind, I'm not sure who that would work against more, right? Because both teams do have A-plus running backs. Um, right. Neither Goff nor Dak Prescott, to me, is a rocket arm passer. Well, so that's not... why it could, mm -hmm. the wind would affect both of them because I think they put a lot of air under the ball generally when they go deep. So it could move the ball a couple of yards off. It would be, it'd be a better game if the wind was down. If the wind's up, then, I, and then the long passing game could effectively be removed because these guys aren't as accurate as some of the other strong arm throwers like that guy in Kansas City. Right. A lot of wind would take Brandon Cooks out of the game. He's right. really primarily a deep threat. Right. Uh, Mari Cooper would probably have a little bit better uh, of it on shorter routes. But, all right, well, I like the Rams there to win. I'm going the futures route. Sounds like you're thinking about the money line play. Is that right? No, I, see, I, 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 get, I never thought about the futures play. That's where I would go because I predicted in the Fremont Outpost that it would be Rams, Chargers, Super Bowl in Atlanta. Sounds crazy, oh. I know. So futures <laughs> would be the way to go for me. I'll tell you them. what, speaking of the Chargers, why don't you lead on the Patriots versus the oh, Chargers? This is what I've been waiting for, Rich. You, <laughs> you have been touting yesterday's news for weeks that the best bet is the Patriots. I couldn't disagree more. This is the worst Patriots defense I've seen in years. Brady is still Brady. Gronk is healthy now. But one... One awkward turn in the back, and he's out of the game. I, I, I can't believe they're giving me five and a half points. I would, I would pick the Chargers in a pick em game. So I'm taking the points. I think the Chargers are going to win this by six or seven points. Wow. I, know people, okay. I know people think, oh, it's snow, it's Foxborough. This is the worst Patriots team I've seen in quite a while. They they can only rely on the AFC lease. I know they beat the Bears. I know they've had their moments. This defense is maybe the worst defense alive left in the playoffs. The Patriots are not anywhere near their top form. I'm all in for Chargers. They've got talent. They're hungry. I think they just kind of took the, their foot off the gas at the end of that Ravens game. Okay. Phillip Rivers... They've got they've got everything you need, and they're a great road team. I I think I think this could be this could really be the end for Gronk. This could be his last game, and the Patriots are going to have to retool. They they need some they need some younger blood in there right now. I I don't know how they won as many games as they did. They didn't look that impressive to me this year. Well, you know, uh, difference of opinion on this game. Big difference of opinion. Yeah, big uh, difference. I <laughs> I do feel 
uh, and I felt this way for a long time, yeah. that the Patriots on the futures market yeah. are one of the absolute best bets on the board. Yeah. So you, uh, I think you mind. mentioned that last week. You've certainly told me that more than twice over the last three weeks. So I'm oh. of, no, of no surprise to me. Well, I'll say this has Patriot year written all over it. They quietly, quietly mm. are the two seed in the AFC. If yeah. KC continues to implode, if, if KC loses to the Colts, yeah. the Patriots then host if they win this game. And I understand yeah. you, you believe they lose. Patriots host the AFC championship game. Right, if they win. Let me say this. A minute left, a minute left right. in that Ravens game. Yeah. against a rookie quarterback, Lamar Jackson. And right. you mean to tell me that the Ravens still had a chance to win that game? And you feel, based on that performance, yeah. that they're going to beat Tom Brady, Tom Brady in the playoffs in New yeah. England? Yes. Oh, oh come on. <laughs> Maybe in a different episode, I can, I can describe why Tom Brady isn't the GOAT. Because of my completely biased belief that Joe Montana's the greatest, I won't even give Tom Brady number two all time. I'll come up with some other guy like Otto Graham or Johnny Unitas just to stop the goat talk about Tom Brady. I saw, yeah. I saw Joe Montana. Even the games he lost were amazing. No, no one could deliver the ball right on the money like him. I know Brady is great, but he's not as good as he was. This wasn't his best year. It was still a very good year, but... I think I think Tom has seen the last of Super Bowl Sunday. To be honest, I'm sorry, Tommy. Well, well, I'll say this: um, the Chargers. Uh, if you just look at the personnel, the yeah. Chargers look like they have the better team than the Patriots. I'll yeah. I'll concede that, right? Yeah. But let me say this: there are problems in Charger Land. Oh right? no! Last, last hey. three games. Well, last three games. Now I'll agree. They were against uh, excellent defenses, right? Denver and two against Baltimore. But the last three games, more than 90 pass attempts, Phillip Rivers has one TD. Yeah. One. Now, my point to you is Bill Belichick has had an opportunity to sit down with that tape and see exactly how Denver and Baltimore took away the Charger passing attack. Oh, wait. They had mm -hmm. a good defense. Is Bill Belichick going to bring a new defensive unit out there? Because otherwise, it ain't going to work. Bill Belichick is going to have to get a new hoodie or wash his old one. <laughs> when, he's, when he's walking off after being beaten by the Chargers and like Gronk is being carried off the field into retirement, he's going to have to come up with a new plan. I mean, Brady will still be around, but who else is going to be around on that team? Well, you know, I'll say this. Uh, Chris Hogan, uh, Julian Edelman, uh, Sony yeah. Michelle, the yeah. uh, Patriots actually do have some players. James White. Um, I understand that some high-profile guys have had either off years, Gronk, or suspensions. Right. Josh Gordon. But keep in mind, the Patriots this year, I'm not even being nostalgic here. This okay. year, this the year. Patriots are unbeaten at home. Right, I unbeaten. I, they beat the Chiefs, didn't they? Right, beat the Chiefs. Yeah. My beat, point to you is, in, in a lot of better weather Chicago. than this Charger team's going to face. Mm -hmm. Amazingly enough, the Chargers have only lost once on the road. So I guess if the Chargers win, then they would both. I, the Chargers would have one road loss, and the Patriots would have one home loss. They would almost be equal, except the Chargers would be playing in the AFC Championship game while New England is fleeing Boston so they can go to warmer weather or wherever Tom Brady and his wife go. Maybe they go to Brazil immediately and hide out. Who knows? Well, well I'll, say, I'll say this, too. While the Patriots were wearing sweats watching films, right, right in film study. Tom, Tom Brady loves watching film. He says it all the time. He, he could watch film all the time. He's well, definitely. think about it. While, while Tom had a few extra days to watch film, yeah. Philip Rivers was dealing with the league's best defense, T-Sizzle and company, right? And, they, in a and, game, he, won. and he won oh, the game, even though it was closer than it needed to be at the end. You still won. Right, close, right. And let's face it, too. We say he won. I would argue that it's the Charger defense that won that game. 
right? I, because I agree the Chargers again, defense is so very far. Right, right. Right, and so to me, I don't like the, poor, the four-point line. You're getting somehow a plus 550 on the futures market. In other words, you're getting longer odds yeah. on the Patriots than you are two teams, you know, two other teams, right? The Saints, the Rams. And so to me, this play makes itself. Uh, my advice to gamblers is to expect the Patriots to win. Um, stay away from the four-point spread. Instead, bet futures. Uh, Take the 550. The argument is, and you'll hear this from me after we talk about the KC game, okay. I believe there is a fair chance, a yeah. fair chance, uh -huh. that the Patriots host the AFC Championship game. Okay. All right. Fair and, enough. How much and, is that futures bet worth if the Patriots lose? It's probably worth zero at that point, right, Rich? So you're yeah, advice, this. this is well, on well, tape, right? So, like, uh, come next week, uh, how, what is your explanation going to be for, I hope you all took that futures bet, even though the Patriots aren't going to play anymore until this fall. Well, let me say this. <laughs> you know the Chargers right now, the Chargers right now on the futures market are 10 to 1 underdogs, 10 to 1. Okay. And uh, I'll just say, you know, if a gambler has any hesitation on this game, Right. Play the futures market on both. Just kick the can down the road. Pretend you're, you know, um, the U.S. And government the last that, few years. Not kick, only kick. that, this mm -hmm. is the rare year where if the Chargers win, there's it's a not unbelievable scenario. They could be hosting the AFC Championship game if the Colts beat the Chiefs. They, the, the fifth seed could be the host of the AFC Championship game. Let me ask you, is is that how it would play out? Because I know... Yes. Oh, okay, you're right, because the, the uh, Titans... The sixth seed, right. Right, right, Titans won the division, right? Right. Titans won the Colts division, right, you're you're right, but do you no, want the, the Chargers Titans at all? No, the win the Colts division, because the Houston Texans won the Colts division. Oh, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. Houston wins, right, you're right. So, Indy... Would have to go out to um, India Los has Angeles. No chance to host a game. They're the, right, they're but, the but, lowest seed. but do you? Well, we were here talking just moments ago yeah. about the fact that there might be more cowboy fans at the Ram right. game and Ram fans, right? right. right. Well, right. the Chargers <laughs> talk about tepid fan support. First off, if I'm a Charger fan, I might want them on the road. That's the first thing, right? Because they do better on the road than they do at home. Second. Yeah. You know, I mean, the Colts might have right. more people in that band box where the Chargers play than the Chargers do. I think that's a problem for next week, to be honest. <laughs> okay. Okay. So so this week, on this the week. back of a performance where a rookie quarterback almost took them out late, you feel the Chargers are going to go into New England where Phillip Rivers has done terribly. And you feel they're going to beat this Patriot team because Rob Gronkowski is a little bit banged up and the Patriots aren't as strong as some of the years in which they won the Super Bowl. I think is the that Patriots defense is, is, is probably the worst it's been in five years. And their offense is not as good as it normally is. And Gronk, how many games has he actually finished? It's like 50 percent, 25 percent. He's a shell of himself. He is. He's, I, he's I, I, I think that I, I'm very confident the Chargers are going to win. That's why getting the points is like a bonus. Okay. No, need to go on, no need to go on the money line on this one as far as I'm concerned. Oh, really? Take okay. the points. <laughs> just take the points just because you don't want to play, you know, crazy. You never know if they bring in the official back from prison and they, they bring a Zamboni onto the field and they try to make it easier for the pages. Who knows what the Foxborough crew does there? There's no telling what what lengths they'll go to make sure the Patriots have the best chance to win. I don't know what's going to well, happen. Well, well, let me just close with a different opinion here. Um, yes. You know, New England, this is your typical year where the public has gotten ahead of itself, right? Uh -huh. uh, we keep hearing about New England's demise and how yeah. Jimmy G is on the wrong coast and there's supposed to be dysfunction in New England and stuff like that. But yet, yeah. they have the two seed. And let's face it, you know, they lost that game in the regular season to the Miami Dolphins on the last play of the game, right? Yeah. Some fluky right. play and stuff like that. The Patriots, for all they've done, could even have a better record than this. 
Also, Tom Brady last year had the best statistical performance a quarterback has had in a Super Bowl, right? Uh-huh. I know Tom's in his 40s, but the bottom line is Tom Brady is playing great football. Brady is a schematic quarterback who doesn't okay. rely on having a Jerry Rice or, dare I say, a Freddie Solomon. <laughs> he had Randy Moss. I'm a, I'm a Montana fan, Sorry, too. Randy I'm a Montana Moss fan, too. But, Randy huh? Moss was good. No, no, Randy was good. But I'm saying this year, I believe Brady, especially with an extra week to prepare, will be able to make it work with not just Gronk, but Chris Hogan, Julian Edelman. You know, those guys put together aren't a bad receiving team, right? And the Chargers for, you know, a big part of the Chargers is the pass rush that frustrated Lamar Jackson, right? right? It's Ingram, it's Joey Bosa. They're in your face. They're giving you problems. Well, against a quick release veteran quarterback like Tom Brady, uh, that kind of pass rush isn't going to phase him. We just saw him in a Super Bowl, the last Super Bowl, where he was up against Philly, mm-hmm. and he handled himself, right? Fletcher right. Cox, all these, all these guys who are supposed to be collapsing the pocket, uh, weren't able to get to him. Yeah. So you know, I, you know, but you know, your old your old team proved if you can rush up the middle, the Giants beat the Patriots twice in Super Bowls by going up the middle and disrupting Brady's rhythm. That that was the key to winning those games was defensive line play. Both those games. Oh no, I'll agree. I'll agree. Um, we're talking about the Giants for those who don't know, right? And know. Uh, Gi- people the Giants know. also had Michael Strahan coming off the edge, right? But Right, but a lot's happened since then, right? Strahan's retired. He's on TV. Tom Brady, well, Tom Brady has been to multiple Super Bowls. Um, Yeah, I know. I know. So LeBron James has been to a lot of championships, but he doesn't have a lot of trophies, though. Yeah. Kind of a low percentage. You know, last year, AFC Championship game, Tom Brady went up against a very good Jacksonville defense. That's before he goes up against Philly's defense. My point to you is, A veteran quarterback who gets rid of the ball quickly can neutralize Joey Bosa and Ingram in a way that a rookie quarterback like Lamar Jackson can't. Mm. And my concerns, too, are the Charger offense. Ah. They haven't been dumped. Phillip Rivers throws for less than, what, 180 yards against the Ravens? Well, the Ravens have a better defense. You're talking about veteran quarterbacks like Philip Rivers is not a good veteran quarterback himself. Brady oh, no. had more decisive advantage over other quarterbacks he's faced. Philip Rivers is probably playing as well as he's ever played at age 37. He's a very good quarterback. Oh, no. Rivers has looked great until these last few games. And well, my he point played the was... Ravens twice. He, he lost one meaningless game and he won the playoff game. What was the other game that he had a Denver. Denver, a Denver, team that did not Denver's make the playoffs. Been winning, Denver's been winning games, kind of like the 49ers did at the end of the year. They played well against teams that were kind of thinking about something else. Denver has a very good defense. You're talking, about, you're talking about two teams that are definitely top seven minimum defense. The Patriots don't have that type of defense. They don't. <laughs> You know, I think the Patriots are rested. I do feel the Patriots have uh, a lot of safeties. I believe that Belichick's background, he used to be the giant defensive coordinator, is on the defensive side of the ball. Right. Um, I think they give Phillip Rivers problems. And my point to you is, if they can just have Phillip Rivers play the same game he just played against the Ravens, right, the same game, He's not uh, have the same game. Different defense, okay, different game. Okay. Let's, okay, let's, you think let's, he's going to do better against a rested and more playing. We're, we're not going to convince each other. We're obvi- obviously okay. taking on a different side of the fence in this one. There's, we're not going to come to a meeting of the minds, which I think okay. is fine. Okay, well, just, just to summarize, Jeff's take, he likes the Chargers. Chargers. Getting LA, the points. This is LA's year. Both sides right, of the and... Bracket. Let me say, if you're inclined to, you know, go with the Chargers, too, consider sprinkling a little bit on the futures because futures, the Chargers are 10-1 right now. Yeah, because they could be in Atlanta. Hey, Rams, fancy meeting you here. What are we both doing in Atlanta? What a surprise. No one saw this one coming. Oh, wait, one guy <laughs> did. <laughs>
Ryan, well, I might shock you with these next two picks. Okay. Let me All say right. this. For me, um, I do feel the winning side of the play, and I could be wrong, are the Patriots on the futures. I would definitely, though, take a little and sprinkle it on the Chargers at 10 to 1. When you have a 10 to 1 prop out there on a team with as many wins as the Chargers have, I believe you have to take it. Okay. So just just food for thought. Okay. Um, why don't we go to Philly oh, against New Orleans? The big easy. Eight I'll points let you favorite. lead. Eight points the Saints are getting. Giving, excuse me. Right, eight. Philly. Oh, you talked about the million-dollar quarterback or million-dollar play. Well, the Phillies quarterback is a million-dollar quarterback because for every postseason game he starts, he gets 500000 and for every postseason game he wins, he gets another 500000 So he got a million dollars last week for beating the Bears. Right. I hope he gave some of it to that poor Chicago kicker. Oh, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> Cody Parkey. Yeah, thanks for the million bucks. Here's 10 bucks. Thanks, pal. So yeah. the Magic Hat, mm -hmm. the Magic Hat of Nick Foles, Nick Foles, he kind of pulled it out a little bit during the game. He seemingly played well after throwing two picks. But now he's going to New Orleans, where the New Orleans Saints are awfully good at home, and he's playing a quarterback who may be better than him, even if he has a Magic Hat. So what are you thinking here? This, you, this, you, you've kind of sprinkled this with surprise. Let me go first. I think you have a surprise element. I think Drew Brees and the Saints can't believe their luck. I think they're going to win this game, cover the eight-point spread. I think Drew Brees is going to put 40-plus points up against the Eagles. The Eagles, I think, as I said last week, the winner of the Bears-Eagles was going to be a one and done. I think New Orleans romps. This is the only game I expect to be a beatdown. So I think this is the end of the line for the NFC East. I guess the Cowboys are going to go down close, and the <laughs> Eagles are going to be. Hopefully, they can stay a couple of days and have some drinks on Bourbon Street because they're not they're not going to enjoy the game against the Saints one bit. It's going to be, it's going to be. It could be like a 17 point loss. This is going to be a serious. Nick Foles throwing up ducks, interceptions, a lot of disappointment. But they do have the Lombardi Trophy until February, so they can. Take some more pictures of that, but I, I don't see, I, I don't foresee any possibility of the Eagles making a game of this by the time we get midway to the third quarter. I think they will realize they've been had, but I don't know. What do you think, Rich? Okay, I uh, <laughs> wow. So, so you actually have them covering the eight? Is that oh, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Okay, I uh, I'm a big Saint fan, but I like the Eagles in this one. I think this Ooh. game could be. A monumental upset for a few reasons. Oh Let me say this. Yeah, well, you let's talk the about it. The Eagles are going to beat the Saints? They, they, they barely got here with a double doink. That was quite a one-two punch. Chicago, New Orleans. And then Are they going to go all the way to the Super Bowl then? Or maybe let, let's, make, let's hear the case for them beating the Saints. Because I can't imagine a scenario where they beat the Saints, to be honest. Well, well let me say this. A few weeks okay. ago. You remember right. the uh, Chicago Bears were I playing the regular that. season yeah. final, right? Yeah. <laughs> and everyone said, hey, look, you need to roll over here. Yeah. You know, um, you don't want to face the Eagles in the playoffs. You want to face Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings, they didn't right? Take people it. people <laughs> then sensed, right? People then sensed right. what this Eagle team was bringing to the table. Now, let me say this. Um, yeah. I agree 100%. That Carson Wentz, if you just look at his skills, right. if you look at his athleticism, if you look at his arm strength, objectively, he's a better quarterback than Nick Foles. Mm -hmm. But I believe what we're going to find out as we analyze leadership abilities, somehow find a way to quantify it over the coming years, yeah. we're going to find out that the Nick Foleses of the world, and I believe this is the difference, by the way, between Montana and and Aaron Rodgers, ah. who I consider to be the most talented quarterback I've seen, but Montana's the better quarterback. Right. I believe the Eagles with Nick Foles are just better than they are with Carson Wentz. And mm. I believe we're going to see it in this game. Controversy. The end of the beer game, the end of the beer game was interesting. Yeah. Nick Foles gets them to the two-yard line. 
Right. Then Nick Foles on fourth down finds Golden Tate. Right. I'm telling you, the Eagles have guys, Golden Tate, Darren Sproles, who are complete right. gamers. They are the defending champions. When I look at this line, the line is clearly off because keep in mind, I'm just going to name some other teams in the last five weeks who've come within eight points of the same team, right? Okay. They, okay. they lost to the Dallas Cowboys. Right. That was they, a great game by the Cowboys. Right, that, they, that game was they, in Dallas, though, right? That game was in Dallas, I believe, right? I think it was in Dallas, but the point, though, is, you know, this Saint team, if they're such a juggernaut where they, right, they should right. be favored by eight in a playoff game against a defending right. champion, right. Uh, they, they shouldn't have lost that Dallas game. They beat Carolina by three, right? right. Pittsburgh right. Steeler game, that's a three-point game. Uh -huh. I think... I think we've gotten ahead of ourselves with this eight-point line. Let me also point out that the worst loss the Eagles had all year, uh -huh. the worst, the was worst. to this same team. And uh, understand, an argument what, can be what, what, made. What, what was the what was, gap in that game? What was the point? What was the score? The worst. New loss Orleans won forty-eight-seven. Ooh. And let's and let's uh, okay, talk I'm not going to predict a 41 point victory. I will just, I'll say 17 point victory. Let me let me say this: people forget where Philly was with Carson Wentz this year. Understand they were still half the time. If they don't well, remember. no, no, that's that's true. But I'll say this: <laughs> that that first game, Philly had just played the Cowboys and had lost to the Cowboys, coming off a bye. Right. Now this was. For gamblers, a sandwich game because after they played the Saints, they had to play the Giants, then the Redskins, then the Cowboys, and on top of that, after you know, the NFC divisional games, they they had to play the Rams after that. Okay. Right? People forget how how bleak it was at the time they played the game. Philly was four and five. Right. Now I believe there's a controversial touchdown late in that game right. where. Philly players thought that the Saints were pouring it on, right. right? Touchdown by Alvin Kamara late. So right. I'm expecting, I'm expecting Doug Peterson, and we need to start giving this Super Bowl winning head coach some respect. Right. I'm expecting Doug Peterson to have no problem getting his troops ready because they have to have revenge on their minds, oh. right? And, right? And I'll say, I'll say that Philly, the eight is ludicrous uh, i don't believe the saints cover the eight uh -huh. i do feel that philly who just beat the three seed just beat the three seed yeah has an outside shot of, of taking this game unfortunately so, the game's inside though so if they're in the parking lot they're not going to win the game <laughs> no agree, <laughs> agree and i'll also agree with those who say look philly just played a very physical Chicago Bears defense and teams that play Chicago the next week tend to be a bit beaten up. But um, I look at this same team and I see problems, right? Um, you have Michael Thomas, who's a slot receiver. Right. On the outside, you don't have stud receivers. You just don't. Funny how, how Tom Brady doesn't need receivers, but Drew Brees does. I think he's operated with not the best receivers in the league for how many years has he been playing? You know what? Tom Brady's singular. <laughs> okay. No, no. Tom Brady is singular, right? He's not, he's not right? the best because... of all time. He's number three at best. Well, he's well. He's up there in the top ten. Oh, no, no. I think I think Montana is the best quarterback I've okay. seen. Okay. Okay. Um, I would say talent-wise, I prefer Aaron Rodgers to both Montana and to Tom Brady. But Aaron Rodgers doesn't seem to have the leadership skills of a Joe right. Montana. And he's got or, a terrible coach now, too. I, or, I or, the right, is. right. The uh, coach, that's a compromise pick. You know, right. they went to Aaron. Aaron said, hire the young guy and right. stuff like uh, that. If right. if there was a team that needed a Vic Fangio, it's the Green Bay Packers. Right. But, but getting back to this game, right. the play I like is Philly plus eight. Right? Uh, I'm not surprised further. based on your lead up. I, I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but the, I want to talk more about the outside chance, which I don't foresee, that the Eagles, exactly how are the Eagles going to win this game? What, what scenario do you believe the Eagles are going to outscore 
the Saints in New Orleans. Okay, let me say this. Um, Drew Brees is older, um, just like I, Tom Brady. He's only a but, couple weeks older since the season ended. He's not substantially older than, than when right. the season was going on. But I'll say this. I've seen some decay with the Saints. Oh, no. Look Look at the halftime score. Saints came back and won the game, but look at the halftime score of their last matchup against Tampa Bay, a team that blew out its coaching staff, right? Um, you're going to see that at halftime, Tampa was actually up. Right. The Saints were struggling. The Saints have been struggling for a while, right? This isn't they the ramp finish of the season. 13-3. Mm -hmm. Also, Tampa's a divisional opponent. You know divisional games are going to generally be closer. They see each other at least twice a year. Right, but uh, but I think everyone watching this video understands that Tampa's defense this year <laughs> wasn't Philly's defense. That wasn't I, the only Philly... good game Tampa had this year. They beat a, another good team. I, I don't. I I didn't follow the Tampa. Tampa was up and down. They obviously right. aren't a very good team, but they're capable of playing well a couple times a month. They're the kind of a blah team. They've got talent. They obviously didn't have good coaching. That's why the coaching staff was dismissed. But uh, well, let's well let's well let's stay in the division. Look yeah. at the Carolina game where yeah. Carolina. I know they blow out Carolina the second time, but that first Carolina matchup, Carolina's within three points of them. My point to you is, Colin Coward said it, that uh, the quarterback had the MVC, the most valuable camp. Cam, the first half of the season, had the highest completion percentage of his career with North Turner. Cam, the Panthers just fell off the cliff the second half of the year, but they they looked to be a playoff team for half the season. I know, I know, but understand, I'm talking about a game that took place in the last five games. In other words, okay. the, uh, right. the, the Saints have decayed a bit, and uh, I just don't believe this line is what it – should have been in, let's say, early October, when the Saints were a bit revolutionary and teams didn't know how to deal with them, right when Mark Ingram comes back from suspension, right? But but lately, the Saints, just the fact that the Steelers, as dysfunctional as they were, without Levy and Bell, were within three points of the Saint team. They were right? fighting for the playoffs. The Steelers looked to be a playoff team until they just... Their running back replacement for LeVay, Mr. Bell stopped running as well. They Whatever the film said, the defense coordinators, and then they became one-dimensional. Yeah, but, but, but Jeff, the Steelers were fighting for the playoffs. I Philly's know. in the playoffs. Understand, Philly's going to be motivated. Well, you're the one talking right? about these close games. I, I'm still trying to figure out how the Eagles are going to do this because I think they would have to play a perfect game, and even then... The Saints have a better team. I, I don't know. I, I understand what you're saying. I know right. Philadelphia is capable of playing good games. They were, and they've been in playoff mode for the last six weeks. Sure. I, just, I, I just think the Saints have been a pretty steady team. 13 and three. They're excellent at home. Philly, some would say, okay, well, they've got the magic formula. I've seen a lot of teams win really great games really close games, and next week get destroyed. It doesn't, the momentum doesn't carry over, and beating the Bears wasn't like beating the 85 Bears. This Bears team was a young team, and but they should have won the game. They should have made the field. Philadelphia shouldn't have been in this game to begin with. But now that they're here, they've got experience. I just think right. the Saints are a better team. I'll say this. Um, I, I personally feel that Alvin Kamara is yeah. one of the very best players in the league right. i think i think kamara is a cut above tyree cohen of the bears yeah but he's you been notice, great the last couple of years he's, he's an impressive player he is, I agree. He is he, he's very impressive but matt Nagy, an offensive guy right against this philadelphia defense uh -huh. couldn't find a way to get tyree cohen a lot of touches and, and Tyree Cohen does a lot of the same things Alvin Kamara does, right? Yeah. Beats you in open space, can slip out, uh, yeah. breaks tackles too. Um, my point to you is yeah. this, this Philly defense, uh -huh. not having to really worry too much about the outside receivers, being able to take Michael Thomas uh -huh. out of the game as some teams have this year.
And then being able to focus on Alvin Kamara, I think the defense is going to make this a lower scoring game. Right? And all I'm saying is eight points, I think with Nick Foles, right? He hits Golden Tate for the key touchdown. You and I know his number one receiver is Alshon Jeffrey. In other words, this this Philly team has weapons. I haven't even gotten to Zach Ertz. I love Zach Ertz. Love him. Well, all I'm saying is you have more offensive talent. I actually prefer Zach Ertz, the tight end, right, over a 1,000 receiving yards with Alshon Jeffrey and Golden Tate, Uh right? I I actually prefer them with Darren Sproles Uh over the personnel that Drew Brees and company are going to put on the field offensively. Uh And, okay, well, we'll see how many and, yards they get. And I'll just with. say this this Jordan, Philly Jordan, defense is playing Jordan inspired just, ball, right? Just held a beer to less than 20 in Chicago. Mm-hmm. They're not going to hold New Orleans to less than 20 or even less than 30. All they have to do is hold New Orleans to within eight points of them. <laughs> you've, well, covered, you've covered well, the eight point spread. The That's what I'm is, saying. When you're behind and you're Nick Fold and you've already threw two interceptions against the Bears that almost killed them. When he's behind by 14 points in the third quarter and he's forced to throw and, and you know, he doesn't have a great arm. He's more of an intermediate thrower. He, and the, I don't know. I, I, I feel that New Orleans is going to be really geared up for this game at home. But I just think they're vastly superior. Even though Philadelphia has great talent, they've been a very up and down team. Let's, Let uh, me say this. You were... You were defending Philip Rivers yep. when he went up against Baltimore, right? Nick Foles had much better numbers going up against Chicago's defense. Much okay. better numbers. Look at the number of times Nick Foles threw the ball. Also, keep in mind, Nick Foles made the Pro Bowl before he ever put on Philadelphia colors, right? He has the year where he has 27 touchdowns and only two picks. This is the, his second tour of duty. He didn't even oh, play that's right. That's right. He, was, he was an eagle before. Yeah, right. I'm talking he, about his close His magic, <laughs> His magic hat isn't going to make the trip to New Orleans. This is going to be a blowout. I think but, the guy's low-key demeanor right. is exactly the kind of leadership style Philly needs. And right. I think this... We'll just ignore my phone. This always happens during videos. We'll just Where's ignore the Where's your daughter? Is she going to make a cameo appearance this week? She's in daycare right now, uh, so, okay. you know, right. You know, we'll just let that phone ring. No, I well, kind of like it. Way. It's kind of like Johnny Cash is on the, the, the rails or something. What's the nice <laughs> I like the ringtone. Well, okay. I'll say this. So, Philly, other, I like other, Philly other plus eight. Bet, other futures bets you want to take with Philadelphia here or some other cockamamie way? You know what? Money? Because because I'm taking the dog, yeah. right? Keep in mind, Philly plus eight gets me the win if New Orleans wins by less than eight. Right. Right. So I like so I like Philly here. I am going to sprinkle a little bit because you're sprinkle. getting double digits yeah. on futures. I like Philly uh, with the point spread plus eight. That's one bet. That's the one. other bet I like is to sprinkle a little bit on Philly on a futures. You know, the problem with sprinkling is that it doesn't get inside the Superdome because they've got a roof. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, but, I know. Uh, I, I love this. Too. So yeah. far, we're not agreeing very much. Now, it'll be very interesting to see what's going to happen with our last game where oh, our okay. boy, our best quarterback is John Elway at Stanford. Our boy is leading mm-hmm. his troops into the seemingly unstoppable Arrowhead Stadium in Patrick Mahomes. The, That's the almost certain MVP. Pat, what could possibly happen to slow down these Chiefs, Rich? I think a lot. Uh, oh, do you yeah. want to lead or, or do you want to take this? No, no, please tell me because I, I, I this may be a game we agree on. But Okay, okay. I like the Colts uh-huh. getting five what? and a half points. How, how many points are they getting in this one? Five and a half. Okay. And it's outrageous. Um, I'll just say this. I know a lot of people are focused on San Diego's personnel. Excuse me. The Los Angeles Chargers' personnel. Uh, I think the best team, the team that might be playing the best ball right now, are these Indianapolis Colts. I think you need to look at them hard. Um, They're on a 10-1 run. It's luck 
in a new offense where he doesn't keep the ball that long, right? Frank Reich has installed an offense that Indy didn't have before. And I think that Luck is, to me, a better quarterback than eventual MVP winner Pat Mahomes. Yeah, let me also look at the experience. So yeah, luck, luck, luck is made a remarkable recovery. This is oh, one and of his I think years. Yeah, this is one of his better years. He has a running back now, Marlon Mack. Right, the right, Mack, who Mack truck. Had, You know, we here have been talking about the Cowboy rushing attack with Ezekiel Elliott. Just understand, last week against Houston, the division winner, these right. Colts rushed for more yards. As a team, the Cowboys did yes, in Seattle, the right? They rushed guy. 200. Yeah. Right. And so, to me, I believe that the Colts are the play here because yeah. when KC has gone up against teams bound for the playoffs, they right. faltered, right? Uh-huh. They lost to New England. They lost to the Chargers. They lost to Seattle. Mm-hmm. They lost to the Rams. Yep. The defense is terrible Take a look at the number of first downs they've given up in some games. You're going to find multiple weeks, multiple weeks, where this Kansas City Chief team gave up more than 30 first downs to an opposing team. That's terrible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even more problematical is their missing in action running back who's no longer eligible to play in the NFL. They're not the same same team they were when they had one of the top five running backs in the league. Right, right. And so I, I'm i not worried about the game being in KC because Andrew Luck is a veteran quarterback. Right. You know, let me also say going forward, you mentioned that the Super Bowl is going to be indoors in Atlanta. It is. Right? The Colts are an indoor team. Understand, depending on what happens, right? I believe the Colts would be a live dog against the San Diego Chargers. Just food for thought. Right. Colt defense, if you go by football outsiders, the DVOA on the Colt defense is actually above average, which is a big difference from past years. Right. You know, I agree if the Colts win this game and have to travel to New England, right, right which, which I believe is a distinct possibility, ah. uh, they're going to have a hard time because Luck doesn't do well against Bill Belichick. But don't rule out the idea that this Colt team takes the AFC. So I think I think the Colts are live dogs here. I like the Colts plus five and a half. I like the Colts regardless of the spread. And I like the fact that Andrew Luck, with his playoff experience, with the team performing better and better, the defense playing mid-range, but well, they've been playing well. And... He's faced the same coach and team with a 21-point deficit five years ago, and he came back and won. That was a pretty good Kansas City Chief team, too, and the Colts didn't have a ton. They had better receivers, but they didn't have a very good defense or a very good offensive line. I think the Colts' offensive line is much better. You mentioned Mac. I know they don't have household names, but their receiving core, I guess T.Y. Hilton's the leader there. And their defense is playing better, but Luck is playing as well as anyone. I think that are going to win the game outright. So I would gladly take the points. Yeah, or let me let me say too, them. right that um, the over under number is in the fifties. Ah, right? yeah. um, I actually like the over. I can I see would, this I, game I getting so to the sixties. As you mentioned, Kansas City's defense is not very good, and the Colts, they both teams can score a lot of points. Because, what, Luck had 39 touchdown passes. They both can score. Right. It really depends on the weather. I don't know what the weather is going to be like in Kansas City this weekend. The game is Saturday. Right. There's there's the possibility that there might be snow before the game. Uh, uh, yeah, but doesn't sound like it's going to happen during the game. Let oh. me just add a caveat, too. Uh, Pat Mahomes, Right. this is his first playoff game. It is. I think, I think that's a problem. For it, right. right. We just saw other young quarterbacks, Lamar Jackson, for example, uh, implode in their right. first playoff games. Um, if you are a gambler who bets over-unders by the quarter, I would consider ah. the under 
for the first quarter because I'm getting the feeling that Mahomes is going to come out. I know Andy Reid's going to have gadget plays and stuff right. like that. Right. But um, this cold defense might be able to slow them down early. So, you know. I think we're on the same side here. I think I think the Colts do have a legitimate chance to win this and potentially the next game, too. I think their their second half of the season, they've been among the top few teams in the league. They've They've had to. They've been in the playoff mode too, just like the Eagles have. They've had to win pretty much every week for the last six or seven weeks, and they've only lost once out of the last eleven games. It's been an impressive run. Right. They uh, sacked Deshaun Watson three times. Right. Last week, Andrew Luck going up against J.J. Watt and Jadavian Clowney never gets sacked. Uh, right. This to me is the best team Luck has been on. I this is so Luck's too. best shot to make it to the Super Bowl, yep. right? I think everything's lining up for him. Yep. So, um, right, I think Casey's going to get tested. What I like about this play, too, is because you're getting five and a half points, right. if Casey wins by a field goal, great. You're still cashing the ticket. Exactly. Yeah, I think it's a good bet. It's probably the best bet of the week, I think, to be honest. Because my pick of the Saints, eight points is a lot. When you're getting five and a half, when you're I like getting, I like I like the Philly bet the best, but go yeah. ahead. Uh -huh. But five and a half for the Colts and the Chiefs. The Chiefs don't have a storied history since Len Dawson stopped lacing them up. I, I don't remember the last time, even with Joe Montana, they couldn't get past the AFC Championship game. They haven't had a lot of recent success in the playoffs, especially when they've been the number one seed. It seems like it's almost a death wish for them to be the number one seed. Marty Schottenheimer, Andy Reid, right? Uh, no. You know, it's just not. It's just not. I, I, I think Mahomes could play well. It's going to be a tremendous home field advantage. That is a place that has a home field advantage. But Luck is at that perfect point of experience and confidence, and I think he's playing with a real joy. Just his post game interview a year ago, his career could have been over. And now that he's oh, healthy and, and, and his team is playing well and no one expected them to be here. I think he's going to play confidently. And, and as you mentioned, he's getting rid of the ball much faster with the help of Frank Wright. I mean, the Colts are in a really good position right now, I think. Oh, I, you know, I have to say, too, that you have Andrew Luck here with an above average defense. Right. Going up against Pat Mahomes with no defense. And no running back. Right. No no running back, a uh, record of losing against playoff-bound teams, yeah. um, less experience. I think there's only so much that the uh, Chiefs can do. In other words, sure, a great atmosphere is going to slow down some people, but right. we just went through a week where experienced quarterbacks, Phillip Rivers, on right. the road, in the playoffs against Baltimore, uh, Nick Foles on the road against Chicago won the game. Right. And the fact that Luck himself won last week on the road um, right. tells me that this crowd, Luck's played, as you pointed out, in the right. playoffs, in KC before, um, he's going to know how to handle it. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, and T.Y. Hilton, I don't see how they stop him. Also, Eric Ebron, mm -hmm. right? You know, he had a spectacular year. If you're going to think about Travis Kelsey, you have to think about Eric Ebron, right. who's who's been phenomenal. So, um, yeah, I think Luck's underrated. Um, I think that shoulder, he has confidence in it now. Right. Uh, I'll be surprised if the Colts don't cover. I'll just put it that way. Okay. So you, oh. have, you have... Also, sprinkle some on the futures. Colts are 12 to 1 on the futures. Uh, more <laughs> sprinkling. <laughs> and well, Sprinkling will go with the snow. It'll be a nice combo in Kansas City, even if it's just snow. Well, that's, 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 that's if it snows, right? Yeah, that's it's, right. It's, it's hard to right. tell. It'll probably snow in New England. It snows in Boston in January often, so I wouldn't be surprised to see snow. Right. It's going to be cold in New England. I know that. We're making this video, by the way, on Thursday the 10th. Right. So, um, you know, you want to be aware of the timing here. Uh, if new weather news breaks on Friday, it might not be incorporated here in our takes. Uh -huh. That's true. So I have the Chargers hosting the AFC Championship game against the Colts. <laughs> and New Orleans hosting the Los Angeles Rams. So, interesting. I have 
the road warriors continuing to do well in the AFC and, and the uh, rested teams to hold hold serve at home. So, okay, I, you know, my my sheets, one of those you've heard before. The New yeah. England Patriots hosting the AFC Championship. Oh, that'd be exciting. That'd be right? exciting. I, you know, I do think that Philly has a chance to knock off the Saints. I know you do. I which know. would have them going to the Rams. The Rams. To, to play that young team in the mm. NFC Championship game. In any event, if it doesn't happen, that's okay. As long as Philly comes within eight. As long as you cover. As long as you cover. Right, right. Give me the cover. If they do more than cover and these futures are still alive, oh, yeah. then I'm in the penthouse before next week's games even kick off. Okay. Then I'm just well, hedging and, and enjoying. The future may be now, Rich. The futures may look bright, but come this weekend, the futures may not be worth much if, if you're on the wrong side. That's the danger of the futures. It's not a free thing. You actually well, have to win the game, too. Right. I'll just say this, too. Uh, if Sean McVay has to go yeah. up against Doug Peterson in the ooh. NFC Championship game, yeah. ooh, that's going to be hard on the Rams. But we'll get to that yeah. next week, hopefully. Yeah, next week, yeah. Anyway. Well, <laughs> uh, this is going well, to be a clear difference. This is not going to be a potential tie for us this weekend. We're on different sides of some of these games. It'll, it'll be very interesting to see how this works out. I'm Great games, again. Only one blowout, ruining your Doug Peterson and Nick Poole story. But the rest of the game should be pretty competitive. Okay, all I'm saying is, just remember the phrase, same as it ever was. Okay. Tom Brady. Tom, Tom Brady, deep in the playoffs. Is that, is that right. why they call Eagle, you a talking Eagle, still alive. Is that uh -huh. why they call you a talking head, Rich? <laughs> <laughs> might be, might be. Okay. All righty, sir. Hey, I think that's a wrap for this week. Am I correct? All right. All righty. All right. I'll let you go. Take we'll it see easy. see you next week, fans. Okay. You got it. Okay, bye. bye.